Watching, we hear the babies in the background. You're one of the super moms holding it down with work and home. We're making sure you know the facts surrounding the coronavirus, so we are taking your questions to the expert. This morning, we are joined by LSU Health Infectious Disease Specialist, Dr. Fred Lopez. Thank you so much for joining us again. We're just going to jump right into these questions. Someone is asking, my husband and I are together in the same house. We haven't kissed in over a month. We both feel fine. Should <laughs> we continue not kissing? Sorry for laughing. I don't know why they stopped then. Well, I, I don't think the um, listener is going to be happy with my response because if you look at how this virus is spread, it's person to person between people who are in close contact with one another, which means within about six feet. And usually it's through respiratory droplets that are produced when an infected person coughs, talks, or even sneezes. And so these droplets can land in the mouth or noses of people who are nearby or maybe even be inhaled into the lungs. And that's how infection begins secondary to COVID-19. The fact that some studies are now showing that people who are infected don't show any symptoms means that even though you're feeling fine and may not have any symptoms that you're demonstrating, you could still be infected and potentially transmit the virus to someone else. So again, knowing that, um, the best advice I can give is to continue their current practice um, and remain physically distanced from one another. Okay, even if neither one's leaving the house? Well, if neither one has really left the house and, and hasn't been exposed to anyone else who might have transmitted the infection. But again, a lot of it depends on what people are doing when they leave their homes and whether they're being exposed to the virus and recognizing that 25%, maybe as high as 50% of people who are infected may not demonstrate any symptoms or might be pre-symptomatic, I think is really a compelling reason to continue physical distancing. All right, all right. I was trying to help the people get a kiss, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Next question. Right. After we flatten the curve, people will still be able to get this virus. So then how do we protect ourselves in the long term? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, I think a lot of what we're doing already is going to be continued. Uh, washing your hands frequently, staying away from people who are ill, if you're ill, staying at home. A lot of it is going to depend on the infrastructure as well. When we start to reintroduce practices that um, uh, maintain a semblance of what we used to do, um, it, we're going to have to have testing that's readily available so that anybody who's symptomatic can be tested and isolated, and then we can contact trace those individuals who have been around that person in order to quarantine them as well, because really testing is going to be a major determinant in how well we're going to be able to contain this in the future. The other thing is the hopefully the um, development of vaccines and more effective treatments. Um, if we can develop those uh, preventative and therapeutic interventions, we can also maintain containment of this virus infection. But your absolute reader is absolutely correct. We are still going to see this virus. It's not going away. It may come in a second wave in the fall, and uh, we need to be prepared, hopefully, with an effective vaccine and with some treatments that are reliably effective. All right, our last question is, is it safe to reuse plastic grocery bags? Should you be washing the bags if you're still trying to store them in your pantry and reuse them? Yeah, you know, plastic bags, um, they're disposable. So what I would say is empty those bags, throw them in the recycling bin if you have it, and then clean and disinfect any tops, countertops that that plastic bag has been on top of. Because we do know the virus can persist on plastic surfaces uh, for hours to days. And so they can, the virus can persist in reusing those bags, although it is possible. And yes, I would recommend disinfecting them unless you're not going to use them again for a week, in which case the virus is probably no longer living on it. Um, the reusable bags that we see sometimes in uh, groceries can be wiped clean as well with a disinfectant wipe if you're worried. But again, if you're not using it for uh, in several days in between, chances are that the virus is no longer persisting on that surface. But the safest thing is to disinfect. All right, thanks, Dr. Lopez. Definitely a good question. We all try to reuse those plastic bags. All right, guys, we'll continue taking your questions regarding the coronavirus. Dr. Lopez will be back with us at 830. You can text those questions to 504-529-4444.